Now is the time I would like to introduce, I'd like you all to give a warm welcome to Seth Myers from Saturday Night Live's Weekend Update. Seth. Uh, they offered me a teleprompter tonight, but I uh, said I would prefer using paper, and I'm realizing now this is the worst event to make that decision. <laughs> I would like to thank the organizers for opening with Alec Baldwin, known to many as SNL's greatest host, to be then followed by myself, known to many as that guy. <laughs> I'm here tonight for two, me uh, two reasons. One, I believe in uh, what NRDC is doing. I think it's incredibly important. But more importantly, I'm here because Lauren Michaels asked me. <laughs> Just to give you a sense of Lauren's influence on his cast, if he were to say global warming was bullshit, I would be out of here. <laughs> uh, you've raised $1.3 million tonight. Congratulations. That's excellent. And I know this is bad timing, but if you were to give me that money, I could double it in a year. Just so you know, I usually tell jokes at 11.30 on Saturday night at 30 Rock, but they say if you really want a perfect comedy audience, tell jokes at 9 o'clock on a Monday in a church. <laughs> Preferably for a group of people who just spent upwards of $2,000 for a vegetarian dinner. This is an exciting year to be involved in this event. More people than ever care about the environment today, not just because of the Obama administration, but because the economy is so bad, more people are living outside. <laughs> Whatever your politics, you have to admit it's nice to have a president who believes in science instead of one who ditched science to get drunk in college. I'm speaking, of course, of Taft, President Taft. It's been a busy week for the environment. For example, Michelle Obama announced that she's going to grow her own vegetables. I think that's great. The optimist in me thinks that's really awesome. Hopefully that will inspire more Americans to do so. And yet, the pessimist in me thinks, isn't that what you would do if you were worried about another Dust Bowl? <laughs> Is the president worried he's going to starve? Also, at 8.30 this Saturday, lights around the world were turned off as part of Earth Hour which was an attempt by the World Wildlife Fund to bring attention to global warming, or the World Wildlife Fund just robbed a bunch of people. That's what I prefer to think happened. But seriously, nothing makes you appreciate the issue of global warming like turning the lights off and running into your coffee table. Today, my company, NBC Universal, says it saved $2 million last year by going green. They announced that today. And it believes it can save even more this year by having Jim Cramer yell at windmills. Also, this past Saturday, event chair, tonight's event chair, Leonardo DiCaprio, won the Big Green Help Award at the Kids' Choice Awards. And I think, yes, let's give a round of applause. I think I speak for all of us when I say, I'm glad something finally went right for that guy. <laughs> this is interesting news. The fate of the Hummer will be decided tomorrow by GM. If discontinued, thousands of Hummer drivers are going to have to find new ways of letting people know that they're huge douchebags. <laughs> so maybe you scientists can get on that for them. Uh, we have two uh, honorees tonight, Stella McCartney and David Zasloff. Let's give them a round of applause. Stella McCartney is, of course, a fashion designer, and her decision to not use fur or leather in her creations makes her a hero to the NRDC. Yeah. However, it also makes her public enemy number one at the Paramus, New Jersey shopping mall. <laughs> David Zaslav is our second honoree. David is the president of Discovery Communications. A round of applause for David. The Discovery Channel is, of course, the industry leader in pro-marijuana programming. I'm speaking, of course, of Mythbusters and Shark Week. 
Although I have to say, in its 21st year, I'm worried Shark Week might run out of ideas. Last summer, there was an episode where a hammerhead got a makeover from five gay sharks. <laughs> and at some point, I feel like the sharks are attacking because they know there's a camera. It's kind of like an underwater real world. The Discovery Channel is more, of, uh, more than Shark Week. For, uh, for instance, the Emmy-winning Planet Earth. I don't know if you've seen Planet Earth, but it's amazing. Truly amazing. In fact, Planet Earth was so successful that Earth left his first wife. <laughs> but with Stella and David tonight being honored, it is a rare blend of fashion and science. And should someone from the world of science hook up with someone from the world of fashion tonight, you will have the first act of a terrible screenplay. Tonight is the greatest combination of fashion and science since Ginger and the Professor. <laughs> For any of you under 50 who are not a comedy writer, that was a Gilligan's Island joke. <laughs> and now, to do my part to help the environment, I would like to recycle previously used weekend update jokes about the environment. And not to raise the stakes, but I should let you know that every time one of these jokes bombs, a polar bear dies. It's not in my hands, it's in yours. <laughs> Some hunters, scientists, and environmentalists are pushing for hunters to start using green bullets, which do not contain lead and do not harm the environment. Except, of course, for that part of the environment that is deer. <laughs> I know everyone here tonight is a great lover of deer, save for perhaps Matt Lauer. <laughs> who's not even here. I tried to burn Lauer, but he heard there were going to be deer jokes. More than 600 self-professed climate change skeptics met this week in New York to challenge the notion that global warming is real. The group chose New York because they wanted a location that wasn't too close to the edge of the earth. Think about it. Now decide you don't like it. Now remain silent. Alaska's Mount Redoubt erupted twice this week with the larger burst sending an ash cloud 65,000 feet into the air. The Alaskan volcano spewed so much gas and hot air that Todd Palin tried to marry it. In a journey published in the Journal of Experimental Biology, scientists in Australia gave liquid freebase cocaine to bees to see what would happen. And what happened was the bees slept with them. According to a new study, fish from five U.S. rivers were found to be tainted with traces of common medications, including Benadryl and antidepressants. As a result, several fish have pulled out of their Broadway plays. <laughs> a hunter in Missouri who had shot a deer twice was seriously injured when the deer, who wasn't dead, jumped up and gored him or as the story was reported in the deer community, serial killer injured his victim fights back. <laughs> An elephant in China that had become addicted to heroin at the hands of illegal traders will return home after three years of rehabilitation, and then, I'm guessing, release a crappy acoustic album. Music industry likes that one. I'm now skipping jokes. I hope you're happy. <laughs> I'm worried I'm going to kill some polar bears. Kevin Richardson, an animal trainer at a preserve in South Africa, said this week that he likes to swim with Meg, a 400-pound lioness that lives there. You can read all about it in his upcoming and almost certainly unfinished autobiography. This is my last joke, guys. <laughs> if you're wondering where your exits are, there are those four bright red exit signs. A lizard-like creature. This is a sweet story. You guys are going to like this one. 
A lizard-like creature named Henry at a New Zealand zoo has unexpectedly become a father at the age of 111 after receiving treatment for an illness that made him hostile toward prospective mates, earning him the nickname Lizard Larry King. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. I think if Lauren agrees with me, we'll move the show to Mondays at 9. Also, I'm donating these jokes to a park for kids where they're going to plant them to never be seen again. Thank you, guys.